Uh, the title of this morning's sermon is Before and After. Before and after pictures can be pretty fun and remarkable. There are before and after pictures of people who get fit and they see dramatic transformation in their bodies. There are before and after pictures of home remodeling projects. This is my favorite. Home remodeling projects. You see old kitchens and you see dull bathrooms get a fresh new look. And then there are a unique kind of before and after picture, before and after pictures of lifelong marriages, husbands and wives who grow old together, but they still take the same pictures <laughs> in the same locations, doing the same poses, and of course, with the same smiles as when they first began. But there are other before and after pictures that are very, very sad and heartbreaking. There are before and after pictures of cities and landscapes that see widespread destruction and catastrophic loss from natural disasters. There are before and after pictures of people and places that have been ruined and forever changed by war. And there are before and after pictures of people who suffer the consequences for the poor choices that they made and the wrong things that they did in their lives. These kinds of pictures do something simple but profound. They show change. They tell a story. And they make us think. Today's passage is a before and after picture. It really is a before and after picture of the fall and exile of Jerusalem. And today the Lord is doing something simple but profound with this word. He wants you to see how much has changed. He wants you to know the story behind all of it. And he wants you to think about who you are, where you are at, and what you are doing in your life right now. Highland first, see how much has changed. See how much has changed in the fall and exile of Jerusalem. We see that the food and the water, it was gone. In the aftermath, those who once feasted on delicacies now perished in the streets. And those who were brought up in purple, those who were the foodies of the Old Testament, now they embraced ash heaps. They were like dumpster divers. Children begged for food. And nursing infants, I had to research this. I think this is true. If you're a doctor, let me know if I'm wrong. Nursing infants were so dehydrated, no water, so dehydrated that their saliva thickened, their mouths became dry, and their tongues stuck against the roofs of their mouths. Dry mouth syndrome. This happened. This starvation happened, and it was a slow and terrible way to die. Happier were the victims of the sword than the victims of hunger who wasted away, pierced by lack of the fruits of the field. 
so much has changed. Food and water were gone. Beauty and radiance were also gone. In the aftermath, we see that those who were purer than snow, whiter than milk, they ended up having faces that were blacker than soot, and they were unrecognizable in the streets. Those who had complexions that were flush, skin that was glowing and rosy, like red-colored coral gemstones, those who had bodies that were beautiful in form, like well-shaped and highly durable sapphire gemstones, now they had skin that was shriveled on their bones and dry as wood. You would have been unable to unsee the ugliness This really happened. So much changed. Beauty and radiance were gone. But perhaps most of all, gone was the righteousness and the honor of the people. In the aftermath, people were brutal, cruel, and dark. The children begged for food, but no one gave them anything. They were less than human and more like animals, like wild ostriches. Ostriches who were known for abandoning their eggs and even attacking their children without any care. They were worse than even the jackals the wild and unclean dogs of ruin and desolation. And perhaps worst of all, there were women. They were once very compassionate, but they did the unthinkable. They boiled their own children for food. This really happened. And those who were worth their weight in fine gold were now regarded as just earthen pots, meaning they're just ordinary, of no value or esteem. So much has changed. Righteousness and honor were also gone. But there is a story behind all of this. The opening line of poetry in today's passage, that one line masterfully tells the entire grand story in the fewest of words. How the gold has grown dim. Gold does not lose its shine Gold does not grow dim on its own. As the most noble of the noble metals in the periodic table of elements, and now if you're a chemist, correct me if I'm wrong, but gold is the least reactive metal toward atoms or molecules at the interface with the gas or liquid. (laughs) In other words, gold doesn't change on its own. So then how did this gold in Lamentations 4, how did, how did this gold lose its shine? How did it grow dim? The answer is this. It lost its shine. It grew dim. Because whatever light that was hitting it and reflecting off of it was now gone. And so with just that, you have the entire story of the fall and exile of Jerusalem. Because you see, the gold in Lamentations 4, that was the gold that made up the temple. The temple was the place where the Lord dwelled with his people of old. And the Lord's dwelling place was illuminated 
by a lampstand, a lampstand that gave light to all the gold around it. The gold grew dim because the Lord took away that light. The Lord gave full vent to his wrath and he poured out his hot anger. He kindled a fire in Zion that consumed its foundations. In other words, the temple, it was gone. The light of the lampstand was gone. The Lord disciplined his people of old. He reminded them of the fall and exile of Adam. He taught them about sin. And that was all a foreshadowing of the final judgment, the ultimate punishment that is to come in hell. And so, for the goal to grow dim, that was a wake-up call. A wake-up call for the saints of old to take more seriously the covenant of grace to take more seriously their covenant relationship with the Lord. Oh, how the gold has grown dim. Highland, I, I really hope that you see in this brief segment just how much has changed. And I hope you understand the basic story behind all of it. But now I want to pivot and I want to ask you. I want to ask you to think about who you are, where you are, where you are at, what are you what are what you are doing in your life right now. You know, many centuries before this story, this fallen exile of Jerusalem, there was actually another city that was destroyed by the Lord because of their sin. And that city was Sodom. You've probably heard it, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Because the outcry against Sodom was so great, because their sin was very grave, the Lord destroyed that city. He rained down sulfur and fire out of heaven, and the smoke of the land, it went up like the smoke of a furnace. The narrator of Lamentation bemoaned the thought that the fall and exile of Jerusalem was even worse than that, worse than the punishment of Sodom. And he was right. And just like the saints of old, we deserve more than what Sodom got, more than the punishment of sins in their story. Highland, we deserve everything to grow dim for us. We deserve justice because we have done things that are unthinkable. We deserve our skin to be shriveled on our bones and dry as wood and then set on fire in hell. We deserve the slowest and most terrible way to die. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God that there is a before and after picture for us. A before and after picture for those of us who repent of our sins and believe in Jesus. The Lord has said to you these wonderful and glorious words, do not fear. The Lord has redeemed you with his blood. The Lord has graciously invited you to return to him. And the Lord endured all of his humiliation in order to save you, the Lord suffered for you. 
He suffered for you with a steadfast love. He kept his promise of salvation. He kept his covenant of grace. He is the prophet and priest and king that you need. The Lord, he ought to give you judgment, but instead he has taken away that judgment. This is the salvation of the Lord, a salvation that came with great lamentation. And so, Highland, I just want you to see how much has changed for you. Do you see the before and after picture of your life in Christ? It's so different. It's shocking, isn't it? I look at before and after pictures of people who were not so fit and then they became fit. Some of these pictures are so shocking, it's almost like you think, is this even the same person? Well, I would dare say that your before and after picture in Christ is so shocking, so amazing that actually the Bible says it's not the same person. That in a very real sense, you have become a new creation. So much has changed for you dear saint. Righteousness and honor were once gone for you, but much has changed. Now in Christ, you have been covered and credited with Jesus's righteousness. And so there is now no more condemnation for all the unthinkable things that you have done in your life. You are, as I said a moment ago, you are a new creation. You are no longer like jackals or ostriches. You will be exalted. You are now a child of God, an heir of God, a fellow heir with Christ. And you will be glorified with the Lord. This is your before and after picture. Beauty and radiance were once gone for you. But much has changed, Highland. In Christ, the church is now the beautiful bride of the bridegroom. We are all now being sanctified and cleansed and we will be presented in splendor without spot or wrinkle or blemish. And the church, the church will be the new Jerusalem described in the book of Revelation. And there we see that we will be a city. We will be a city with infinite radiance. You will be recognizable in the streets. You will be brought up in a perfect purple. This is your before and after picture in the Lord, Highland. And finally, it is true. Food and water, they were once gone for you. I'm not talking about literally, but spiritually. But so much has changed. In Christ, you now have the spiritual food and drink of his body and his blood. No, we're not cannibals but we feast on Christ himself. And when the Lord returns with his kingdom in the new heavens and the new earth, you will have a seat at his banqueting table and you will eat the choicest of delicacies and you will drink from the best fruits of the field. 
It's going to be a feast. This is your before and after picture in the Lord. So much has changed for you. And so Highland, I'm so glad to share this with you this morning because I want you to realize this is, this is your story. And this is the story that really matters. What is the story that you are trying to show and tell right now in your life or to others or to yourself? What story are you writing? What pictures are you taking? You know, for some right now, they just want to get fit. They want to see dramatic transformation in their bodies. Others, they're doing home remodeling projects. And for many others right now, they're just looking forward to having and enjoying lifelong marriages. None of these things are bad things. All I want to say is that everyone has before and after pictures. But this story about Jesus, our story in the Lord, is the best story. It's the only one that really matters. We are the temple of God. We have a relationship with our Maker. The light and the presence of the Lord, His steadfast love that comes with His covenant of grace, it will always hit us and it will always reflect off of us. The gold will never ever again grow dim for you. The Lord is your God and you are his people. And the Bible tells us, God tells us, there is nothing better than this. This is your story. And I pray, I hope that it will dawn upon you that, yeah, this story is the best, best story. And so in closing, Highland, please think about these things. Think about who you are, where you are at, and what you're doing in your life right now. This text shows us the sin or the misery and the cost of sin. And so as you grow in love for Jesus, as you wait for him, as you take off the old and put on the new, I really hope and pray that you would take sin more seriously. There is a great misery and cost that comes with sin. Consider this like a wake-up call for some of you. As you wrestle with sin, do not underestimate sin. Remember, compassionate woman did the unthinkable in today's text. So take sin seriously. And please, Highland, remember the big picture. Peter writes in his letters that there will be scoffers who will come in the last days. They will say, where is the promise of the Lord's coming? But I want you to, rem to remember as we start this new week that the day of the Lord will come. It may come this week, guys. It may come in your lifetime. Or if not, you will grow old and you will die. The day of the Lord will come after your life. But you will go to be with the Lord. We don't know when that is. We don't know when the promise is coming, but we know it's coming. And so, may this be your mindset in life. May the pictures that you take in your life reflect what you really believe about Jesus, 
about your future in Him. Highland, are you really waiting? Are you tr- can you truly say that you are preparing for the day of the Lord? Please do not be complacent. Don't be complacent in your life and, and just be happy taking before and after pictures of what you think is your own story. Everyone has before and after pictures, but all of our before and after pictures will end, and there will only be a final picture that matters, the last picture. That's what's going to count. What is that last picture for you, for us? We know what it is. What will your final picture look like? Do you cherish it? Before and after. Oh, what a joy it is to read God's word. I really hope and pray that the Lord uses this sermon to encourage and challenge you. Come, Lord Jesus. Come soon. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for your word. We are amazed at the before and after picture that we see in Lamentations 4. And we are super amazed at the before and after picture that we have in Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the salvation, the love, the forgiveness of sins, the feast, the honor, the righteousness that we now have, this final picture. Oh Lord, please bless Highland with faith and hope and love in this before and after gospel story that we have in Jesus. And please help us to wait well, to apply this in our lives, to rethink how we are living right now, to take more seriously sin and to be more zealous in our waiting and in our preparation for this day of the Lord that is coming. We love this picture. We are amazed at this before and after story. The one that matters above all things. And so God, please help us to ponder such things as we look at lamentations. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.